Okay, this should be a welcome back. Um, it, hopefully you've seen part one of 1.3. This is 1.3 graphs of functions. In 1.3 we did a number of examples and talked about all the new rules and things we're looking at. Um, not one of them is particularly hard, but there are a lot of new concepts to get your head around. And we're going to pick it up with uh, the last page for our note sheets. In 55 through 62, gr sketch the graph of the piecewise function. Piecewise functions visually to me look like this, where this might be factory called f. There's two different treatments that can be applied to our input, um, and like here, three different treatments. So I'm going to start where the graphs change, and first thing I note is when, when, I, put, when I put in negative 4, the graph is going to switch right away from being from getting this treatment to being getting that treatment. So I'm going to just x, y, t chart this and I'm going to put negative 4 in. And the true negative 4 would come in here and would get treatment A. It's less than or equal to negative 4 so that is 2. Now I'm going to count by 2's for my height here. I've kind of pre-worked this one and I don't have near enough room for my second graph. But at negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. So this is 2 4, negative 2, etc. I get that graph. I get that point. And then I want values that are less than negative 4 to the left of negative 4, such as negative 5, to see what's happening. When I put in negative 5, I get 1. So at negative 5, I'm 1. And there's a slope of up 1 over 1. Well, it should be. But this graph only exists in this, this portion of the graph only exists in that direction. Okay, now here's one that, that gets people on these piecewise. They're going to say, okay, well then I should put negative 3 in to see what we get here first. No, you probably really should put in negative 3.999999999. I'm going to actually put in negative 4 here, but then I'm going to draw that point as a circle on the graph. I get put in negative 4, I get negative 12 minus 4, negative 16. And negative 16, truthfully, would be all the way down here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. But I'm putting a circle there because I don't really, I jump. Negative 4 gets the treatment up here. Negative 3.999999 gets the treatment just to the right of here. So next I'm going to go to negative 3. When I put in negative 3, I get negative 9 minus 4. I get negative 13. So let's see, that'd be 14, 13. And now this is just a line. Don't forget things we already know. This is just a line with intercept, with y-intercept, negative 4, slope 3. So this graph wants to look like this. So sketch the graph of the piecewise function by hand. Um, Things we, we would maybe be discussing is are things like relative minimums, maximums, domains, ranges, um, domains everywhere. Range is from negative 16 and up. We've got almost a relative minimum here, but it doesn't exist. This could be a relative maximum of the graph up here. Um, but anyway, all we're supposed to be doing is the piecewise function. Probably a really good time to pause and try number 60, but I'm going to go right through right to it. And I'm going to check my treatments. I'm going to start with this one. So I'm going to put in negative 3. And I'm going to try to do some shortcut work here because I know what the graph of x plus 5 looks like. When I put in negative 3, I get 2. I'm going to just count by 1s here. It's going to fit. Negative 3 gives me 2. And then this is a graph with slope 1, but it stops at negative 3. It looks, we got a point, 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 slope 1. The graph looks like this going to the left. And then from negative 3 to 1, circle, circle, the graph is just up 5. So at negative 3, it wants to jump to up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, circle, until I get over to 1, circle, and connect. And then at 1, the graph wants to look like a line with slope 5. So at 1, I put 1 in here and I get 5 minus 4, 1. 1, 1, that point truly does exist. And now it just wants to have slope 5. Or we could put in 2 
and we get 10 minus 4, 6. But that's up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1. So this graph wants to look like this. And that's all we're to do on it. Um, even and odd functions. Let's go back. Let's review even and odd functions. I've got my sheet here. And we talked about this one on the first video. Tried to make sense out of this. We say a function is even for if for each value in the domain, the height to the left is the same as the height to the right, such as this and this, or this point and this point. It's ref it's it reflects over the axis. Okay. Use a graphing calculator to determine. Well, I don't need a graphing calculator for all of these. Here's 64. f of x equals negative 9. Here's negative 9. The height is negative 9. Does this, is this graph symmetric over the y-axis? Well, the height everywhere is negative 9, so the height to the left is the same as the height to the right. Therefore, this graph is even. How about the graph for 66? We don't need a stinking calculator for the graph on 66. We know it goes up through 4, and it has a slope of negative 5. It looks like this. Is the height to the left? I go left one, I'm all the way up here. I go left one, I'm all the way down here. The height to the left is not the same as the height to the right. The height to the left is not the same as the height to the right. It's not even. Is it symmetric about the origin? Is the height to the left the opposite of the height to the right, like this? Maybe over 2 up 8, left 2 down 8. Is the height to the left the opposite of the height to the right? No, the height to the, to the right one is 0. The height to the left one is way up here. 10, 9, something like that. So this is neither. Okay, we'll go ahead and, and use calculator on 68, although I'm going to suggest maybe we don't need to, but let's take a look. Let's go y equals, I'm going to go the opposite of x squared. Oop, clear. Oh, I've got to clear this first. Try again. The opposite of x squared minus 8. I'm going to zoom standard that. I might take my y window and let this graph go further down. So let's go y min. Neg I'm going to go to negative 30. Boy, it sure looks like it might be. It sure looks like it might be. Even I'm going to give a quick test here. I'm just going to go trace 3. And I'm down at negative 17. I don't know if you can see that. And then I'm going to put in negative 3. And I'm down at negative 17. It seems like the height to the left is the same as the height to the right. Therefore, I believe that one is even. Okay. 70. Let's get this so it focuses in a little bit better so we can see both things. The graph and the text. We got it. Almost got it. trying to get a good balance here. Okay, back into y equals. I'll clear this graph, and we're going to put in our third root of. Um, there's probably actually a way to do this on your calculator, but third root is to the one-third power. So I'm going to go parentheses, x minus 1, close parentheses, raised to the 1 divided by 3. That's the third root. Important to know that. I'm going to go back to zoom 6. Here comes my graph. Now, it appears as though this is rotationally similar around the point 1, 0. But the height to the left, pull this up here again, the height to the left is not the opposite of the height to the right because to the right one, I'm up 0. To the left one, I'm down 1 or 2. So, the, so it's not rotationally symmet symmetrical about the origin. It certainly is not symmetric over the y-axis. So this one is a neither. And finally, 
y equals clear this out. We remember second catalog gets me the absolute value. Once again, about three times in a row, I forgot to put in the negative before it. So negative absolute value, x minus 5. Maybe we know what that looks like. It would be nice if we didn't have to rely on our calculator all the time. Graph. Now, make sure you're clear on this. This graph has symmetry. It's symmetric over the line x equals 5. But it's not in a situation where the height to the right is the same as the height to the left. To the, the height to the right of 5 is the same as the height to the left of 5. But the height to the right of 0 is not the same as the height to the left of 0. For instance, the height at 5 here is 0, and the height at negative 5, I'm going to suggest, is negative 10. Therefore, this one is neither. All right. This will really tell the story here. Do we understand even and odd functions? I like these little short and quick answers. Find the coordinate of a second point on the graph of the function if the given point is on a graph that is A, even, B, odd. Well, if it's even, then the height to the right is the op or is the same as the height to the left. The height to the left is the same as the height to the right. Well, the height to the left five thirds is negative seven. That means the height to the right five thirds has to be the same. But for an odd function, the height to the le the height to the left is the opposite of the height to the right. The height to the left, how does it compare to the height of the height to the right? It's the opposite of. So if we're even, and going to the right five gets us negative one, going to the left five should get us to negative one. Height to the right, same as height to the left. If I go to the left on an odd function, I get the opposite height. And negative 2a. I gotta see what happens to the left 2a. I know to the right 2a, I go up 2c. If it's an even function, I get the same value. If it's an odd function, I get the opposite. All right. All right. Determine whether the function is even, odd, or neither algebraically. Okay. Algebraically, is this thing even? Graphically, or by using graphing calculator, um, some of these perhaps we can probably get a pretty good look at. What we're supposed to be doing here is is doing this by putting in a negative x. So what? See, here's my function based on putting in negative x. And boy, I'm going to be squeezed for room here. If I put in f of negative x, is it clear I get negative x to the sixth, which just becomes x to the sixth, and I get minus two times negative x squared, but the squared cancels the negative, plus 3. Therefore, my height to the left, because those negatives get absorbed to the sixth power and the second power, I got the same function. Therefore, my height to the left is exactly the same as my height to the right. This one's even. Wow, that's quicker than the calculator in this case. Let's take a look of h of negative x. If I take a negative to the fifth, the negative survives, and I get this. If I take a negative to the third, the negative survives, and I get negative 4 times negative x cubed, or plus 4x cubed. And this is exactly the opposite of that. If I took this function times negative 1, I'd get that. So the height to the left is the opposite of the, the height to the left is the opposite of the height to the right. This one is odd. If I find f of negative x here, I get negative x, and I get negative x plus 5. This is most definitely not the same as that. So the height to the left is not the same as the height to the right. Is it the opposite? Well, if I took this thing times negative 1, would I get that? Nope, I'd get this negative, but not inside of there. I just multiply the negative by one of the factors. Therefore, this is neither. 
And how about this one? I'm going to treat this as 4 times the fifth root of x to the third. Now if I put, I guess s I should have, if I put in negative s, see what happens to the left, I get 4 times the fifth root, hopefully my, my screen didn't just go out on you, fifth root of negative s to the third. So what happens with that negative? That negative is going to survive this to the third. This is going to just be 4 times the fifth root of negative s to the third. Negative, the fifth root of a negative, that negative can just come out. So this actually just becomes, let's do, do this, this actually just becomes negative 4 fifth root of s to the third, which if I took this and multiplied by negative 1, would equal that. Therefore, the height to the left, or excuse me, yeah, would equal that. Therefore, the height to the left is the opposite of the height to the right. This one is odd. And you're going to start to think, oh, it's all about the exponents. Well, not entirely. Okay, let's see if I left myself enough room. In 87 to 90, graph the function and determine the intervals on the real axis where the height on that interval is above zero. The height don't say f of x is greater than or equal to 0. Say the height is above. Heights are either above or below. In this case, above or equal to 0. Well, the graph of this one's a breeze. I should have left a grid here. But we know that this goes through 8 here. We know it has a slope of 4, so down 4 over 1, down 4 over 2. The graph of this thing looks like this. When is the height below 0? Well, the height is below 0 out in here. So the height is below zero from negative infinity until we get to negative two. Should I include negative two? Well, I'm allowed to be equal to zero. Oh, wait, that's below zero. I want above zero. I'm sorry. So that would happen starting at negative two, allowed to be negative two forevermore to infinity. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the graph of this. And I'm just going to do a quick mental t-chart. If I put in 0, I get 0 and 0, 0. If I put in 1, I get 1 minus 4, negative 3. If I put in 2, I get 4 minus 8, negative 4. If I put in 3, I get 9 minus 12, negative 3. If I put in 4, I get 16 minus 16, 0. If I put in 5, I get 25 minus 20. I'm all the way up at 5. I believe this thing is a parabola. It looks like this. And we want to know where is it, where is the height above 0? The height's above 0 out here and out here. So from parenthesis, negative infinity until we get over to 0. Zero is okay because zero is where the height is zero and we're allowed to be equal to. And then in union with, start at four and go to infinity. That's where the heights are above zero. Or on a number line, we would say, well, on a number line, truthfully, it's negative infinity to zero and four to infinity. We, we, I guess we could say x is less than or equal to zero or x is greater than or equal to 4. But interval notation is our friend. Okay, there is your assignment. Um, should have shown part of that on the first video, but the assignment's on the website as well. Uh, it's going to take a bit of time on there. There's a lot going on, and hopefully you've got the, the first portion of it done, and you're on track. Um, make sure you're coming in asking questions if you have them.